Hi, welcome to Left Foot Media. My name is Brendan Malone. Well, the other day on my flight home from Sydney, I finally got the chance to see the movie Passengers, and I really, really enjoyed it. It's a really great film, apart from three mistakes that uh, let the film down a little bit. Now, I, I gotta stress, despite these three mistakes, I still enjoyed this film. I still think it's a great film, and I'd still recommend it. It's an enjoyable movie to watch. There's some great acting, and by the way, I'm someone in, who in the past has found Jennifer Lawrence to be a bit of an annoying actress. I think she's been a bit overrated at times. Uh, I find that she can be a bit too melodramatic, but in this movie, I found a, a newfound respect for her and her acting ability. I thought she just played this role really, really well, and it worked. I mean, if she hadn't have played the role well, if it had been too melodramatic I think that really would have let the film down but she plays it well so the acting is good uh, it's it's relatively well written uh, the musical score is awesome uh, it's got some great cinematography and special effects and everything else in it it's a good enjoyable film and it's got some interesting things to say about some existential questions, some important stuff about the human experience. I should also point out that there are going to be spoilers in this video, so if you haven't seen the film and you don't want it spoiled at all, then what you want to do now is shut this video off, go and watch the movie, and then come back and watch this review after you've already seen the film. So let's get into it. The first of the three issues that I have with this movie. Uh, about two thirds of the way through this movie, there is a scene in which the ship loses its gravity, and one of the characters is swimming in a pool when that happens, and they get stuck in a giant bubble of water, and it really is quite terrifying, because you quickly realise as an audience member, they can't get out of the water, like you normally would be able to do to start breathing, they're stuck underwater in a bubble of water with no gravity, and so they can't move as fast. It's really quite a terrifying scene. You feel yourself almost uh, sort of gasping for air as you watch this. Great tension. However, towards the end of the scene, I think it's just not structured properly, this particular set piece, and what happens is uh, the actor passes out. The, 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 the character drowns. And so the character is now passed out in the bubble of water, and then the gravity uh, kicks into gear again, the, the, the malfunction on board the ship which caused it to lose gravity, uh, um, everything comes back online, and the water drops down into the pool, and of course the character is in the middle of this bubble still. Now when that happened, my first thought was how the heck are they going to save this person? I thought what was going to have to happen was another character was going to have to rush from another part of the ship and drag them out of the pool and then uh, resuscitate them, because clearly we all understand the basics of how gravity works, and so if you're stuck in a bubble of water, it drops into the pool again, and you, you've already passed out, then you don't pop up out, out of the top of that. We know that that's just not how that works. Well, unfortunately, that's exactly what does happen. The character, as soon as the water hits the, the pool, all of a sudden the character just flies out of the water, gasping for air. And, and they, all of a sudden, they are conscious again. Well, we saw them go unconscious, it makes absolutely no sense that they would now be gasping for air and breathing again just because the water has hit the bottom of the pool. And it was really jarring, and it pulls you out of the film, and it, yeah, it's a really stark moment. And I remember thinking to myself, oh, I wish they had structured that properly. All they needed to do was instead of having that character pass out, they could have just struggled and struggled and struggled, and you really get the sense of it, and just when you think they're going to pass out, boom, the gravity kicks in, they, they, the, the water drops in, and they're able to sort of gasp for air and, and push themselves out of the water, and that would have been fine. But unfortunately, you pulled out of the movie in that moment. The next problem with the film happened at the very end of the movie, and the final scene is all over, and the credits begin to roll, and as soon as the credits begin to roll, all of a sudden, this boppy pop song by Imagine Dragons starts playing at full volume, and it is a massive tonal shift from the rest of the entire film, and particularly the musical score. There's a really beautiful orchestral-type musical score by Thomas Newman. It's just great. It's, it's signature sort of stuff. It's really enjoyable score. I really loved it a lot. And then all of a sudden, as soon as the credits start rolling, we get this really jarring pop song. It's not particularly memorable. It doesn't fit with the rest of the film. It doesn't fit with the musical score. It just feels like a product placement for a single, you know, trying to sell a single, and they've just stacked it on the end of the credits. Now, the problem is that with a movie like this, this is a sort of film that does have an impact on people, right? It's, it's not some big Oscar winner, but it's 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 about some important questions, and it has an emotional impact. And movies like this, you want to sit with for a little bit at the end of a movie like this. You just want a little bit of breathing space as those initial credits start to roll. You don't want to be hit 
by a pop song straight away. And so all they needed to do was actually just carry on with a piece of orchestral music as the sort of the full emotional impact of the, of the movie is really starting to roll over you. It's hit its crescendo. It's starting to, to, to sort of really take effect on you. And then once those initial credits are gone and you start the sort of black on white or white on black rolling credits, then you can chuck on the pop song if you really, really want to. But because they didn't do that, they just started with it straight away. It was really jarring. It pulls you right out of the emotional tone of the film. It's a complete tonal shift, and I found it really, really frustrating. If they had perhaps used a different song that was more appropriate to the tone of the movie, then it wouldn't have been as jarring, but this was really frustrating, and I really wish they hadn't done it. The third and final problem with the film is a bit bigger. This is the major problem that I have with the movie, and it is in the structure of the writing. Basically, in this movie, uh, it is revealed to us that after he is accidentally awakened, or there's a malfunction on the ship, and so Chris Pratt's character is awakened uh, about 90 years too early, he spends a year roaming the ship all by himself for more than a year, and he becomes really lonely, and he even becomes suicidal. He then notices, purely by chance, uh, Jennifer Lawrence's character in her pod. He researches about her, he reads her books, she's a world famous author, and basically he, he effectively he starts to become infatuated with her. And he starts to toy with this idea, really wrestle with this idea of whether or not he should wake her up. And it's this great moral question, and he uses this perfect analogy when he's talking to the robot bartender about this idea of being, you know, if you were stuck on a desert island and you could wish anybody to the island you could, but they would be stuck there, stranded there for life with you, would you do it? Or would you just stay on your own and let them live their life? And what happens is the movie wrestles with this, and then it shows us in that first act, it shows us that he actually does deliberately sabotage her pod, and so she comes out of her state of hypersleep, and he wakes her up. And then he pretends like she has just been part of a malfunctioning pod like he was, and uh, and from there, this sort of their relationship builds, and this friendship, and then this romance. And then we get to the point where he's ready, after what appears to be many months, he is about to ask her uh, to marry him, and the robot bartender reveals to her, he goes off into the toilets, and he's a bit nervous, he gets out the ring, and he comes back out, he walks out, and she has got this shocked look on her face. The robot bartender has revealed to her that he had sabotaged her pod, that it wasn't just a malfunction, that he had deliberately done this, and she is distraught, and rightly so. This is a serious violation of trust. It's just a huge moment in the film, and the musical score, by the way, is really beautiful. There's sort of this, this dissonance that starts to come into it, and it reflects the mood of this, and the tearing apart, the severing of this relationship. Now, the problem I have with it is this. I don't think they should have revealed to us in the first act that he was the one who sabotaged her pod. It could have been fine to have him wrestling with this idea, but what they could have done was left that question so we didn't know. And then when that moment arrived, we would have been finding out for the first time, just like Jennifer Lawrence's character, that he had betrayed her trust in a very serious way. And you can just imagine how much of an impact that would have had on us as an audience to have found out in that way, instead of being told in advance and then wondering, I wonder how she's gonna find out about this. Because we knew that was gonna happen. It was always obvious she was gonna find out about this, she was gonna be shocked, and they were gonna have to overcome this lack of trust uh, in order to, to conclude this movie with a happy ending. It was, it was never gonna be a dark film, right? So it really sort of, to me, that was a misstep. Now, the interesting thing is, the movie is still great despite this, but it would have been so much better if we hadn't known. If we had found out, you could just imagine the shock, and it really would have resonated in a much more powerful way. Thankfully, though, the final act of this movie, they do manage to salvage that, and I, uh, to, to, to salvage this and solve that problem, if you like. I think it's a writing problem. And it's also really believable. They, they do, the, the, the rupture between them is not cheesy, it's not cliched, it's not short-lived. They really break them apart, and they make this relationship breakup feel very, very real and acrimonious. And the other thing I really appreciated was about this film was th there's, a, there's a whole metaphor going on with the ship. The ship, effectively, is a sort of a reflection of their relationship when you think about it. It's sort of the heart of the ship is malfunctioning, it's not working as it should, and it's all about to explode, and 
and and they've got to solve this problem. And it's it's really the way it's done is really quite cool. And and the rest of the writing is good. I just wish they hadn't revealed to us early on at the beginning that he'd done this. It would have been so much more powerful. We would have just been shocked, and it would have really made the movie, I think, a, a truly great film that would have had such an impact. You would have walked away remembering the film uh, like other films that you know save the reveal for the proper moment. Other than that, though, as I said, three things that I think they could have done better, but I still love this film. If you haven't seen it, look, it's a great film. I highly recommend it. It's well worth the watch. If you have seen Passengers, I'd love for you to let me know in the comments section below what you thought of it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on Left Foot Media.